there was a great point that again, um, so technically, uh, Sequoia didn't lose any money, right? Sam gave them a couple hundred million bucks and they lost 150 million bucks by giving it back to him. Okay. So technically they didn't lose any money. Um, I mean, they did, but okay. But it was his money. So in fact, that's a great strategy. If you could give money to venture capitalists to have them invest in your company, that's awesome. That doesn't happen very often, but okay. Here's the, here's the part of the plan that, that actually someone put this out there and it's, it's so sinister. I love it. Have to get sinister in there for sinister Saturday. So sinister. They're like pretty sinister so far. Yeah. I would so say this, this, discussion. this is all about what's going to happen at the end. The feds are going to seize something, right? They seized Mt. Gox. They seized Silk Road. They see they're going to seize it, right? Then they're going to auction it off. Who's going to buy it? Sequoia or Paradigm, which came out of Sequoia. And again, this is very sinister stuff. If, if your goal is to accumulate a large asset, you don't send positive stuff out and get the price to go up. You send negative stuff. Soros was a master of this. Julian Robertson was a master of this. They want to buy a big copper position. Oh, yeah. WorldCom yeah. Stadium, Tropicana. I mean, go down the list. Oh, I didn't actually know that. That's funny. I didn't. Perfect oh, yeah. correlation, Michael. That it's like really? something like 80 something percent or whatever the number is of stadium names. Those companies go bankrupt. Right. But the books wouldn't balance. Right. And <laughs> if the books don't balance, it's amazing. You know, it's amazing what you can do if you don't actually have to balance the books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at the United States. We can send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine that gets funneled then back to defense companies and the districts that the, the senators own. Okay. But we don't have to fund it with anything because we could just run a deficit. I don't know. It's amazing what, it's I, amazing what you, you could do when you send $500 million to, of customer money to Sequoia to invest back into your brokerage. Okay. Firm. Yeah. But here's the thing. So I don't know about you, but in, in my family, if, if my income goes down, my spending has to go down. I, I just I just don't understand how that works. <laughs> stealing know, it. Um, stealing it's it. It's, super, it's, it's my money. It's your money. It's customer money. There's a lot of money. They, they stole customer it. Money. This is, I, and this a lot is of going to go down keep, as one of the great, you know, I, and, 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 in, in history. And, Madoff family. It was his brother-in-law that was running the, you know, I always say mm -hmm. the thing about, you know, Madoff, they call it a hedge fund problem. But there was no hedge and there was no fund, right? He hadn't made a trade in 13 years, literally had not made a trade in 13 years. And there right. was no fund. Right? He literally, he was, the money would come in and his brother-in-law would transfer it into his personal accounts and he stole people's money. All the and while- the incredible thing about Madoff was for 13 years, they would, remember this is pre-internet, they would mail you a piece of paper with a bunch of numbers on it. Yeah. And you look at it and go, oh, wow, look yeah. at me, oh, wow. I'm rich. And, and, and then and the he, crazy- he kept that going for 13 years. It was incredible. But he also, did, he also did the inclusion thing. He would hold court at the Palm Beach Country Club and he would sit in the corner like I am at a table for four. I'm actually sitting at a table. And he would leave one seat open and a other member would bring a newbie to meet the king. And I was there and I watched this. This guy gets up, says, you have to let me in. Don't you know who I am? And he, the guy had said, I'll invest, but I need to come meet your team. And Bernie's like, no, you're out. So it was this, this tr non-transparent, I mean, uh, opaque. So we got we got family. We got the ex girlfriend running who has no experience. I mean, none. Okay, running this multi billion dollar trading firm. What is her job? Her job is to raise money for politicos. Okay, but she's a Stanford professor. And anyway, mm. I digress. No, yeah, oh, ninety days. Okay, yeah, ninety days. So, so there's this window where if you got your money out, they clawed it back. And and the so and and my personal experience is I uh, uh, one of my siblings had to declare bankruptcy, and I had provided a loan on a project that he did, and he sold the house. He's a he's a home builder, and had my money, and the bankruptcy judge came back to me and said, "No, nope, you got to give back uh, 
uh, one seventh of that because that's what you know the unsecured creditors are due. And and you got out, and I literally had to write a check to the bankruptcy uh, judge that gave it to the credit card companies, which are supposed to be unsecured creditors. I was secured, but yeah, you know, honeydew <laughs> sounds sounds um, like my wife. <laughs> so I get on I get on the flight. I get to Charlotte. I walk up. And they're like passport, please. I'm like passport. Oh my god, I'm going to a foreign country, right? Cayman is a foreign country. I don't have my passport, so I'm still here today. But um, so my bad. Um, but I can go. All I've day. done that once going to Canada for that exact same reason. I forgot. But Canada's it was a not a foreign country. country. I mean, yeah, Indians. exactly. Is it my driver's license good enough? I mean, come yeah, on. exactly. They yeah they they were like nope, sorry. Um, I don't know. But well, where no the the one the one thing is we've lived through every single one before. Mt. Gox, way bigger deal than this. Could have killed the whole industry. You think about the consolidation and, and how much of, of crypto was there. Survive and thrive. But Jim's point is really, really well taken, which is this one's more insidious, which is why I think it's all a government psyop, because... Mm. There's going to be the it's it's interwoven into so many other entities, particularly on the tradfi side, and that's yeah. where the regulatory response here is going to be draconian and punishing, punishing. I, I, I don't know. know I, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar I, enough with Magic: I, The Gathering. I've, I've been playing it with my son, and, and Mount Gox. You know, it's called Mount Gox because of Magic: The Gathering, right? Magic: The Gathering online exchange. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I, I agree I, with. You. I wish I, I knew the right you. card. There is a card called like the Punisher or something that that literally like destroys. Or oh, I think it's a murder card too. So the the the, the punishment uh, approach of regulation. Yeah. Right. Never. And you only become introspective when you lose money. And so we got a lot of introspection to do now. And I think Jim's right. We from that introspection will come will come greatness. But I'm I'm worried about what I, I've talked about this this cycle, right? You know, it's the Gandhi quote first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you. This is the then they fight you phase. And the fight is is about to take a mega notch up. The the punishment that's coming is is going to be. I mean, and look, she's maybe the she might be the worst person I've ever seen in a job, the White House press secretary, ever in my career. I mean, she's just horrible at her job. But you know, when she's up there mouthing the words that you know. Crypto industry, the White House believes the crypto industry needs regulation now. Like, how about this, y'all? How about you regulate something that actually really, really, really harmed the average investor? 